We've arrived safely back in Sapporo for the Sapporo Snow Festival. Thanks in large part to our friends at Northwest Airlines who provided airfare for our crew nonstop from Portland to Tokyo and a simple connection into Sapporo. Northwest also has 11 connections to other cities in Asia, so if your travels take you eastbound, Northwest is definitely the way to go. To officially kick off the Sapporo Snow Festival, we've been invited to a welcome reception. I'm extremely honored to be joined here by the mayor of the great city of Sapporo, Mr. Ueda. What does the snow festival mean to the city of Sapporo? The snow festival has so much important meaning to the city of Sapporo. And then living in the snow country, that means that we have to battle, struggle with the fight with the snow. But uh, we changed our thoughts. We, we have to enjoy more, enjoy with snow. What similarities do you feel that Portland and Sapporo share? Portland is the biggest city in Oregon and uh, with the so much beautiful uh, mother nature and also Sapporo is the biggest city in Hokkaido and we also have the beautiful nature that is one of the similarities between our cities. What is the importance of the sister city relationships? For such a long time we have been learning each other as our good friends overseas as one of the good partners we'd like to continue this uh, good relationship and also uh, mayor is so much uh, respect the city of Portland and also we are very proud of uh, long grassroots activities grassroots relationship among the uh, cit uh, citizens of both Portland and Sapporo My last question, I understand you are a very good karaoke singer. I'm now the pop holders of Twilight Time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a singing bonus on top of that. Well, Mara, who ate it? Thank you. No more gato. Thank you for having us. <laughs> What a better way to kick off another fabulous trip back to Sapporo than a welcome dinner here at Hugetsu. Let's go get reacquainted with our great friends from Japan and with Japanese food. What is this called? Okonomiyaki. And what does that mean? It's like okonomi. Okonomi means as you like or... <laughs> okonomiyaki is like a Japanese pancake. Okay, so now it's time for dessert. Tori-san over here is going to tell us some of our flavor options. Check this out. All right, buddy, what do we got? Mango, strawberry, pineapple, banana, and blueberry, and kurokoma, green tea, caramel, and sweet potato. With an annual snowfall of over 5 meters or 16 and a half feet, a population of 1.8 million people in about 130 days a year with temperatures below freezing, Sapporo is an exceptional winter city. One of my favorite things about being back in Sapporo is how cute the kids are, especially in their snow outfits. Today I get the pleasure of visiting an elementary school and taking a ski lesson with my buddies. <laughs> We got the pleasure of wearing these fancy smancy slippers here in the elementary school. This is for you. Right. 
Martin, what's up with these skis here, buddy? Well, I felt that I could only provide you with the best and newest gear, so I went with these. They've been sitting in the corner of my apartment for the last five or six years. These are all first graders, folks. How cool is it to be a first grader in Sapporo and get to ski during recess? Lombada and skis, baby. You notice how the kids' skis are better than mine? So I guess we're supposed to climb to like the top of this hill and then ski down it? How come these guys don't look scared? Let's see if I'm ready for the Kuroro Resort. They're laughing at me. Each year, the city of Sapporo spends about $150 million in snow removal. The snow is removed from these urban destinations and taken to various dumping sites throughout the city by these trucks, or it's taken to special snow melting tanks. These tanks allow them to melt large amounts of snow at a time in a relatively small plot within the city. This also minimizes the distance that these trucks have to drive, thus creating an environmentally friendly snow removal system. Today we're having lunch with a typical Japanese family, but instead of focusing on the food this time, we're going to show you the differences between a Japanese home and an American home. My name is Takeshi Aoki. Very nice to meet you. My name is Mari Aoki. My name is Aya Aoki. My name is Tatsuhiro. Okay. We're starting a tour in the Japanese home here, and one thing that I noticed immediately is a trampoline. This is very unique for us. Ah, uh, in Sapporo, we have much snow. So they play inside? Yes. So in, in the summertime, do you, does this go outside, or does it just stay? Not stay. So do you play on the trampoline too? Sometimes. <laughs> I would play. It's secret. <laughs> <laughs> That's good though. Is this our dining room? Very nice kitchen. Ah, thank you. This is much nicer than most Japanese bathrooms, I think. They've got a urinal in this bathroom. This is for men? <laughs> and this is for both, I guess. Yeah. That's very unique, I think. Japanese comic books. Baseball. You like comic. Are you going to be a baseball player when you grow up? Nice. I think you'll be all right. So he's preparing a miniature version of the lunch we're going to have today. The toys here are very, very small. So for lunch, we're having prepare your own sushi. We're going to learn how to roll it and just put whatever you want in it. I rolled a perfect sushi roll. First try. We made some amazing memories today. The Ayuki family is a wonderfully warm family, beautiful home. She's an amazing cook. I have a feeling this isn't your typical Japanese home, but it was absolutely a wonderful experience. To keep the streets dry during winter, the city of Sapporo installed special pipes underneath the streets with a special mixture like antifreeze flowing through them constantly. You'll find these pipes at main intersections and on hills like this. I wonder what that must have cost the city.
Sato Line is the newest festival site for the Snow Festival. It's located in the northeast section of Sapporo. Now, this site is mainly for the children and for families, but I'm pretty sure we're going to fit in, too. Who needs March of the Penguins when you got March of the Snowmen? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> golf is very expensive in Japan, so to compensate for that, Hokkaido came up with Park Golf. We gotta try this. Not really sure what's happening here or up there, but the line's pretty long, so it must be fun. Woo! Don't go away! PD Exposed will be right back! Happy random times! Random time! <laughs> so we're at your local 7-Eleven in downtown Sapporo. They have all this stuff here at the counter. Like at our counter we have like gum and like little sundries and things, but here we have this and we have really no idea what this is. So John, how do you say like good evening? Like, bon bon Try it out right here. Come bon Come bon Okay, so Mike, your deal is going to be all about my name is Mike, so the first thing you got to say is, <laughs> first thing you got to do is not slip on the ice. So okay, go with okay. that. Then you got to say, what does you are? What does you are? Mike this. All right. Okay. Okay. Come on, Benoit. How are you? Good, good, good. Come on, Benoit. Nice to meet you. Come on, Benoit. Come on, Benoit. Come on, Benoit. Cheers. Look, it's Marilyn Monroe and the Statue of Liberty. I can't tell which one's hotter. On this trip to Sapporo, we're trying to bring you some different scenes, but some things are so good you just gotta do them again. We're back at the Sapporo Beer Garden, courtesy of our good friends on the Portland Carving Team. Kampai! <laughs> This year, the 34th International Snow Sculpture Contest was held here in Adori Park. 17 teams from all over the world competed, including a team from Portland. After four days and nights of a lot of hard work and a lot of fun, Team Hong Kong took home the prize. Team Hong Kong. Now Hong Kong won. Right. But you guys you guys had a really nice sculpture. What were some of your favorites? Hong Kong. What were your best memories? Well, I think uh, making friends and meeting a lot of different cultures and uh, just hanging out with the people and having a really great time with a lot of talented people. My best friend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you've come and meet. Have you been to Portland? Uh, no. You should come to Portland. Well, yeah, I wish I could one day. <laughs> what was your best memory of the, of the festival? Well, meeting all these guys. We can uh, bond it together. The, the sculptures were amazing. Your sculpture was fantastic. It turned out very well, Team Thank Portland. You. I was very proud of you guys. Congratulations on an awesome competition. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. There are three venues in which you can view the ice and snow carvings at the Sapporo Snow Festival. Adore Park, Satoland, and Susakino. And the only way to do Susakino is by night. Ah, 
Disney. Clearly alive and well in Japan and clearly one of the more popular sculptures. Susakino is where the ice sculptures happen, and this happens to be my favorite ice sculpture because my good friend Trey Hillman, coach of the Nippon Ham Fighters, Hillman's son, was coach of the world champion Nippon Ham Fighters right here from Sapporo. They didn't just win the World Series, folks. They won everything. They won the Asia Championships. They are the best team in the world. Congratulations to Sapporo. Congratulations to Trey, Hillman's son, and all of the Nippon Ham Fighter fans. Julie, we miss you, and this one's for you. Even in Sapporo, you gotta wait in line for bars. But they're ice bars. The ice bar. We love it. Okay, so we're in Susakino. We came across this little house back here, and the guy handed me this menu here. It says it's got hot cocoa hot whiskey, hot wine, and there's like a TV in there with like a karaoke machine or something. I have no idea, but uh, come on, I'm game. Let's check it out. Oh, it's karaoke, all right. <laughs> so they got karaoke, you got some drinks, you got a nice house. What more do you need? Okay, so we didn't know what the last place was, and we got a bonus there. That was good. So this place has got to be as good. It's green, and it's Bailey's. So... I'm guessing there's Baileys in there and maybe more karaoke. I don't know. Come on. Coffee? Milk? Baileys coffee. Hi. Arigato. Baileys coffee. It's cold. It's snowing. Perfect. Costs 200 yen, which is under two bucks. Kampai! 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 digging this whole ice sculpture thing in Susakino because it's basically turning into a bar hop from ice house to ice house to ice house. Ice house. <laughs> I don't understand, but it doesn't matter. I'll have it. How would you describe the Sapporo Snow Festival to our friends back in America? It's like a big festival. Just people get together and uh, having fun. That's what it's all about. Every, all around the world, festivals are all about people getting together yeah. and having fun. Having fun. Come by. Come by. In response to the rising concerns that the airborne dust produced by the use of studded tires was presenting health concerns to the citizens of Sapporo, in 1992 the use of studded tires was outlawed. These newer tires are made of a much softer substance, which they find grips the snow and the ice much better without the use of studs. And guess what? They do. This allows environmentally conscious Sapporo to regain their clear blue skies. On your list of must-dos when visiting Sapporo, venture high atop of Mount Moiwa for a great view of Sapporo. On a clear day, you can see all the way to the ocean. Today, not so clear, but we are stopping off halfway up the mountain at Bar the Ice. It's a nice bar. What do you think they serve at a nice bar? I don't know, but I'm going to find out.
Right here to my left is my buddy, Mr. Takenaka. He's the guy that created Bar the Ice. Let's find out how he did it. This is beautiful. Arigato. How did you make this? At the beginning, he had little uh, strings and on which every day he had a little bit of water. And trickled it down and slowly they built these icicles, but you had to every day adjust for the outside temperature, the temperature of the water, and overall you know, how much ice has developed so far. What are you serving at the ice bar? Cocktail. This is a recommendation, the sweet ice pick. <laughs> so it does individual la layers of Kahlua, butterscotch, Baileys, and vodka. Make sure not to mix the drink before you drink it, and as you drink it, it's to be finished in one drink, slowly drinking it so that you can have the flavor of each one build on the previous flavor. Very good. This drink is not just a special drink for the bar, but it represents how I felt when I was making this bar and how I feel for customers to visit us here now. And when they first come to see the outside, to have their first impression of the outside, to come inside and have a whole nother experience when they see the wonderful ice filters inside. And then to come all the way in, into this part of the bar and enjoy being with other people. There's different layers to the experience, so in the same way I wanted to create a drink that would sort of capture that so that people could enjoy something special here. And that is the purpose of my bar here, the Bar of the Ice, and why I created it, for people to have that experience. Come by! Thank you so Happy Random Times. Check it out, you guys. Uno is alive and well at the American Bar in Sapporo. Midori. Midori. It's 2 o'clock in the morning in Susakino, and I'll tell you what, nothing better than fruit at this time. So, we're at the banana stand. There, banana. Mike has to pee, so I'm thinking that he needs a hug. Ah! <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> it's nice to see our good friends Toto branching out into other ventures here in Japan. I wonder if they bless the rains in Sapporo. I bless the rains in Sapporo. Is it I bless the rains down in Africa or I miss the rains down in Africa? Vitamin drink. Vitamin drink. You're basically you're in between beers, so you're drinking a vitamin drink in between your next beer. Hi. Okay. Okay. Okay, Zippy, we miss you too, and this one's for you. Hi, Zippy! Portland and Sapporo are united as sister cities. Tonight, we unite the live local music scene. From Bessie Hall, United Colors. Tell us United Colors, where, where, how, did, how did the name come about? United Colors. Well, originally we had four members of the band. We had a little graph, sort of, for each person representing a segment of the spectrum of colors. So maybe the four representative colors. And that's where the name came from. Originally the four members were the United Colors. Well, that, that's a good lead into my next question. Then. What is your blood type? A. A. O. O. Me too. You're O. <laughs> okay, so why why is that important? Because we don't blood type in our country we don't we don't talk about we talk about other things like astrological signs, but blood type is very important in Japan. And so tell us what that means. What does your blood type mean? It's a way of sort of uh, predicting tendencies of personalities. And just on a side note, uh, A is the most common. So I noticed you, your music is very traditional, rock and roll is very good. Um, and but you, your your guitars are very traditional. Kind of like Jimi Hendrix age type, you know, from, from style of music. <laughs> who, who, what? No, well, no, no. But who, who has influenced you musically? Rolling Stones.
Thank you very much for joining us on another very special episode from Sapporo, Japan. This time to feature the world famous Sapporo Snow Festival. We made lots of good memories thanks to our wonderful Japanese host, Domata Gata Designers, for help making our trip so special. Thanks also to our local sponsors, Northwest Airlines, Travel Oregon, and Pova. And also big thanks to American Laser, Comcast, Latitudes, London Influence, and the Showroom. We'll see you next time on another episode from Sapporo. Until then, make good memories, everybody. Hi. 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 Recess, folks. These are all first graders. How cool is it to be a first grader in Sapporo? You get to ski at recess. But you're not supposed to run into kids. <laughs>